Welcome to the Top 10 Gardener with Master Gardener, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and top 10 advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your garden host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of Northern Arizona. Thought I'd share, I mean, we are into the spring season. This is the time to be planting trees and shrubs. If you're doing any kind of spring blooming like lilacs and forsythia, you really are, you're behind the eight ball a little bit. It's time to get those in the ground. You want them while they're in bloom or even before they're in bloom and mainly before we run out. So, you know, we'll have a, I don't know, a couple hundred lilacs here, different varieties. And when we're out, it's kind of, we'll have one variety, maybe if you're lucky, no choices. And then what takes over are the roses. And then what takes over that are the crepe myrtles and then the smoke bush. And there's this rotating seasonal change that happens at a good good quality garden center. So you'll see this, whether it's Warners and Flagstaff or Plant Fair and Payson or us. And it's kind of how we operate. And so you've only got two acres to show off the plants and there's not enough room for all, everything. So you try to feature things that are showing their best right now. So I wrote an article last week uh, growing bountiful apples in zone seven. So bite into seven successes. Here's the seven things you need to know about growing apples. And it kind of comes down to all, all fruit trees. But, but zone seven, that's us. This, this central highlands. This, once you get up the hill from Black Canyon City, you're coming up to God's country. And now, whether you live in Sedona or Camp Verde or Jerome or, or Prescott Valley or Cordes or, or Paulden or Skull Valley, we're kind of all the same, very similar. So yeah, you, you folks on the east side of the hill, you might be a zone eight. That's Verde River, Camp Verde, uh, Cottonwood, you know, Sedona, you're zone eight. But really, that's just five degrees warmer in winter than we are. It's not that big a change. We're all dealing with the same kind of plants. And so maybe you're up in Groom Creek, Seligman, Ash Fork. You okay? This it broadcasts up there. And so those that's probably zone six. That's five degrees cooler. You need plants and go down to about zero. We need plants to go down to about five. And the other side is about 10. It's cold in the winter. You need fruit trees that bloom a little later so they don't get tricked into blooming too soon. That's the secret. And so stay away from those desert. First of all, when, when, when a radio show or, or podcast or you're going to Phoenix, you're seeing palm trees, they're talking about citrus. You probably don't want to be buying your fruit trees from there. You need plants that will take our cold. And an orange tree will not do that. It goes down to about mid-20s and then it vaporizes in the cold, but not apples. I featured apples specifically because it's the number one seller. And it's the easiest to grow, more, most consistent of all the fruiting trees, uh, apples and pears. They're the most consistent uh, at fruiting, setting fruit every single year. And so zone seven is going to be plants and go down about 10 degrees or so. And so you need to go some serious cold. Um, there, And then varieties that bloom late in spring. And I'll mention a couple that are kind of the top, the top 10 fruit, you know, apples that we find here that produce consistently, they've proven themselves and that are popular. The main thing to watch with all your fruiting plants, they need sun. So location is everything. So they need at least six to eight hours of sun is going to be the secret. If you give them that much more sun equals more fruit because it's photosynthesis. They're creating all that, that, uh, that sun to create all the fruit. And so it'll help it with that. And so you need a well-drained soil. So if you're out in that valley area, you know, Paulden, oh, you poor folks, you've got great water table, but boy, is the soil hard. Oh my gosh. And you've got wells that are unlimited in their water. So you tend to grossly overwater things. Just that's not going to make a fruit tree happy, especially apples. They want soil that drains is, is, is kind of the, the key. The way you help with that is, you dig a hole that's rich. So you dig a hole that's the same depth as the bucket, three times as wide, because all fruit trees, their roots go sideways, looking for nutrients, looking for, for water and air. They're just, they're just searching out sideways, not down. They don't have a tap root. They've got, they've got a very fibrous root mass that goes sideways. So if you know that's how they're going to grow, encourage them. 
So a nice saucer shaped three times the width, same depth. Amend that soil because they like rich soils. Again, drainage is key. They want to be able to breathe at the root level. The way you do that is you introduce compost or mulch. And you folks in the Midwest, you said mulch is like shredded bark. No, no, we're talking about a composted material introduced into your soil. It's going to do two things. It attracts more worms. Plants love that. It's going to keep the soil from compressing back down so the roots can get through it. The tree's going to love that. And then it keeps that whole process going so the, you get a bigger root mass on this plant. You'll get more fruit that way. Uh, also, fruit trees, they need to be at least, I would say apples on average, about six, seven years old before they're old enough to actually start producing fruit. It's a maturity thing. So they just need to be a certain, they, they got to be at least a teenager uh, so age-wise, as far as trees go, to start producing fruit. They don't do it as a young whip or smaller stage, or they shouldn't. And so about seven years old is the average age of all the fruit trees we have here at the garden center, because we know folks shopping here, they don't want to, they're not looking for best price. They're looking for something that I don't want to wait. I want it producing this year. I want apples this year now. So sometimes you can find it at a box store for less, but it's a whip. And so it hasn't been at the farm long enough to start producing. It'll, it'll be in your yard for two, three, four years before it's actually old enough to start producing fruit. Watch your age. And then also, never, ever, no matter what, buy a fruit tree with a dog leg, an ugly graft, a, a bad trunk, because that is a weak link. What will happen is, is that tree loads up with fruit. That's the weak link. It'll break or fall over or cause issues. Also, it's it's ugly. So you don't want a dog leg tree. It just has this bend in the trunk. You want to be good looking. As a pretty tree grows, it gets more voluptuous, more beautiful, more uh, the canopy. So ours are a little bit older because we can now we can spend more time on the trunk. We can spend more time on the scaffolding or the structure of the, the shape of the canopy. So it can, the structure can hold more fruit as it matures. There's, there's some benefits to paying a little bit more for a whole lot more plant in the long term for, for your, for your, for your yard. And then pick your favorite. Now, most fruit apples specifically, they, they generally need two. They need, they need a buddy. And they can't, they need to cross pollinate and they can't be the same. You can't have two honey crisps or two golden delicious or two galas. They've got to be a honey crisp and a Fuji, a Granny Smith and a Pink Lady. You need you need two different ones to help pollinate each other. A honey crisp is not going to is not going to cross pollinate a honey crisp. It needs a gala or a Fuji or something else. So think in those terms too. That's why the fruit cocktail trees are so popular for smaller yards. We've grafted honeys, pink ladies, grannies, all on the same tree. So you've got multi, it's pollinating itself. It also takes the pressure off of harvesting. So a bigger tree, you're going to have five bushels of apples. What do you do with that? And they got to all be harvested at once. Well, with a, with a fruit cocktail tree, you can, you can harvest the granny Smiths and you go for the Fujis and you go for the golden delicious and they ripen at a, at a sequence. So it takes a little pressure off. Uh, so anyway, that's, Think, think in terms of what your favorite is, and then think of another one that's a favorite because you're going to need pollinators to help grow these, these apples. I'd say, I, I, and I put it in the article last week, if you want to take a look at this, it's on our website under the blog post. It's been one of the top blogs, the top articles. All of my articles get stored on our website, watersgardencenter.com. If you're looking, you can find it. Google, uh, Alexa. Siri, help me find watersgardencenter.com. It'll it'll find it for you. But here's the most popular. Honeycrisp, number one. Gala, golden delicious. Oh, my mouth just watered. Think of the applesauce. Oh, it makes the best applesauce, especially right from the gardens. Fuji. Uh, Granny Smiths actually are delicious. They get a bad rap for just being a baking apple, but they are so, if you leave it on the, on the tree for next a couple of weeks, it just melts in your mouth. Oh, and your mouth's watering again. And it's got a crispness and, and it lasts a long time. But Granny Smith's a good green apple. Pink Lady and John of Gold. Those are your top 
producing top most popular apples. Again, check a look, look at watersgardencenter.com for that entire article. We got more for you. Lisa Waters Lane coming in with your garden questions right after this. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heaths, Rosemary Creeper, Prescott Pansies, and Fanciful Forsythia. Oklahoma Redbud grows to just 16 feet tall. This local native is super easy to grow. Vibrant red flowers cloak the branches of early spring. Luscious heart-shaped leaves emerge with a soft pink tinge that matures to a vibrant green. Shop the brightest blooming trees in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join his daily podcast for timely garden advice seasonally right for the gardens. Ken can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott or through his website at top10gardener.com. You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane and the Top 10 Gardener podcast. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week with your garden questions. What are people talking about? Gardening is here. The spring season, gardeners have been pent up way too long. It's been too cold, windy, snowy, sleety, and they want to be outside. It's mm -hmm. kind of nice to be, you can kind of feel that energy at, on the floor of the garden center. So they're just perusing all two acres, looking out just, just not because they need fruit trees or <laughs> berries or fruit flowers or evergreens or they just want to take it all in and yeah, be outdoors. Definitely. So welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Always good to be back. So how are your gardens? There, you know, I love spring because I love to see things wake up. It just, I love that feeling of. It goes from nothing to these beautiful little green leaves coming out, yeah. flowers shooting out. Um, I just, I love that feeling. Waking up. Yeah. Uh, a fresh, a new, a spring beginning. Yes, definitely. What kind of garden questions we got this week? Well, speaking of cold and things coming out. Okay. <laughs> so John put in a new um, Texas privet in his yard. Yeah. Uh, it had a lot of new growth on it. It was looking happy. Yeah. Well, that little blast of cold it got out. it so he wants to know got some damage to it yeah. should he trim it back now should he wait to trim it back to make sure yeah. we're past the cold and how far do you trim it back yeah john so don't worry don't stress the plant knows how to recover by itself i would say too much intervention from a gardener can do more damage than good i would wait see where the leaf buds are. So some of the leaves were sacrificed, had some black and the frost damage looks like it had tender new growth and it's so tender and so new that that frost came and it, if it's a, it's a shock. And so it goes from vibrant green to black. It looks like someone took a big lighter to it, just kind of burned the foliage. That's frost damage. It can happen on more than just privets. It can happen on fruit trees and mm -hmm. just whatever, anything new, that brand new growth. And it can happen now through the end of, April, really. And so what I recommend is don't overcorrect. Don't try to uh, try to make it healthier right away. Let it adjust. And so all that energy coming up from the roots of spring, they are still going to keep coming. It might have to relief or rebud some, but if you start cutting on it now, you might take off more than the plant would like. Let's see where that new growth comes and in two, three, four weeks. Now go ahead and clean it up and get all those those leaves off. So don't feel in a hurry. What you may do, it's going to need some more energy to create the new buds. So it had it was using last year's uh, you know October's fertilizer, last autumn's nutrients to form this spring's leaf buds or flower buds. Uh, now it's going to have to use this spring's energy food to create additional leaf buds or flower buds. So you might just want to consider fertilizing. That's the best thing I can, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. If you really want to juice it, <clears throat> um, if you've already fertilized, great. Use a 744 on privets. That's the magic stuff. It'll make it go. If you've already done that, what you might do is mix up some root and grow. It's a compost tea that we make here at the garden center. It's liquid. It's like, a, like, like molasses and it's concentrated. So you put three tablespoons in a gallon of water. You might give it a couple gallons and plants just respond 
to that. So you just take it up. It's in liquid form, like liquid magic and take up. and It'll just instantly take it right up to where that frost damage is and start to reform leaves. So don't stress out. Uh, the only way to recover from that is if you covered it with like a frost cover. That would have possibly, uh, but it went from nice to real cold like instantly. Yeah. So that messes with plants. So that's why at the garden center, when you when you drive by <laughs> after we close, it looks like ghosts are all over the garden center. <laughs> it's not because the plants would be killed, but the, we, we're preventing frost <laughs> damage on those outer tips Right. so that it keeps them looking pristine so customers want to go yeah i want to buy one of those that's pretty cool so it keeps it looking at 100 percent. the only way to do that is possibly you threw a sheet over it or something that would have helped protected it probably but not to worry it will recover it will recover no problem yes. all right next question is from sandy she has a vegetable garden area that she didn't use last year Good. just let it sit she said but now it's covered in weeds yeah. uh what's the best product to take care of those yeah. weeds to get rid of the weeds yeah so the best if it's small the best is pull them up by hand take a hoe and just hoe them up and get them out of there because uh, if you spray it with something like decimate, you can spray that. It's, it's it's a Roundup alternative. Don't spray Roundup, whatever you do. But decimate would be would kill them right away. Uh, but you still got to deal with the weeds sitting there, a dead weed or a live weed. If you got to deal with them, just go ahead and pull them yeah. up. Take a hoe to them and get them out of there. Those dandelions have one tap root. If you sever it, they are dead. So mm -hmm. just get some out of it pretty quick. Rototilling, turning. These are all things that kind of help you. But I would say don't turn in your weeds into the gardens because those seed that might be forming, mm -hmm. or you, you just turn them into the garden so they become a problem right. three, four weeks from now. Yeah. Just take a hoe, get the soils ready, and then mm -hmm. turn the soil, get them, getting them prepped. Put a two to three inch layer of manure on top of that bed, whatever that looks like. Turn that into one shovel's depth. Water it really well so you neutralize the nitrogen hit that you're you're introducing into that garden and then you can start planting i mean you could put radishes and carrots and lettuce and broccoli and cauliflower brussels sprouts artichokes you can put all those things in now yep. and so you're ready to plant in about two to three weeks you could probably i don't know where where uh, what sandy is calling from but in two to three weeks if you're up in this prescott area uh, this central highlands, this is Prescott Valley, Dewey, um, Cordes, this area, us, um, you could probably start planting in two to three weeks your tomatoes, cucumbers, <gasps> eggplants, the leading edge. <laughs> I just care, can be frost, but you can, you can cover them, you can protect them. And plus, people are tuned in from the Verde, you know, Sedona, oh, yeah. you all, because they're planting two weeks ahead of us. So you're the end of April, we're the first part of May. So it's time. Get Sandy, hurry up, get those gardens ready. And right now is perfect time just to pull weeds because the yeah. soils are actually fairly really moist. Easy. So yeah. they do come up pretty easy. Great thing about Sandy is she let this, the soil settle or rest. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's diseases that come back mm -hmm. over and over and over, like uh, uh, like vertinillum wilt on, on potatoes and tomatoes. They, that <clears> if you let <throat> it set for a bit, you, that, that, that virus doesn't have the next crop to feed on. So it just comes back and you naturally got rid of it. That's why we rotate crops so right. often. We're moving to, we grow tomatoes here this year, and then over there next year. So we don't allow these, these natural uh, bacterial viral things uh, keep going. Yeah, very true. All right. Our next question is from Darcy. She's in the Prescott Valley area. She says she really wants to put in a red bud, but was a little overwhelmed by all the choices of red bud. Wants to know, is there a difference between them? Is one going to yeah. do better in Prescott Valley than not? Yeah. What are your What are your Remember recommendations? Our first house that we ever bought here in Arizona, not our first house, our first house in California. Mm -hmm. Our second house was here in, in Prescott Valley off of Pawnee Drive back mm -hmm. when they had dirt roads <laughs> and septic fields. It was a little, little tiny town in the early 90s. That's true. So I kind of miss that house. So. Mm -hmm. It's anyway, a pretty house. We never thought we could grow as much as we can out there. But right. The, the valley area is amazing on what they can grow. They can grow everything that, that Prescott can grow and maybe even a little bit more. It's just that hard clay soil that gets you. With that being said, Darcy, any red bud you want. And I would say start with, do I want a bush or do I want a tree? That's start with that. That's Western red buds, a bush. That's the native one. 
And then your Eastern red bud is your standard. Your grandparents have grown it. Generations been out there. That's a small tree form. It's up about 15 feet by 12 feet wide. It's nice umbrella shaped. It's beautiful. They all have the heart shaped leaf. All of them. So <clears throat> you, next you go by shrub or tree. Then you go by which flower color do you like? And it's all variations of pink. I want light pink. I want dark pink. <laughs> I want fuchsia. I want, I want pink. Pick the color. And then you go by leaf color. So there's the standard is green. The native one is green foliage, just standard green, like shade tree green foliage. But they're coming out with a new like like flamethrower. It's got the new growth is red with a with a tinge of yellow. They've got Merlot, which is bright purple. It's there's pick the leaf color. So go by tree or shrub, then go by uh what uh, flower color and then what leaf color and then just go for it. We've got several choices and mm -hmm. we can simplify this a lot for you, uh, but they'll call to you. Pick the one that calls. They, they kind of woo you and go, oh, take me home, plant me. Take <laughs> that one. We are out of time. Uh, Ken and Lisa Lane, the mountain gardeners be right back after this. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandmother would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Purple Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. They don't just bloom once in spring, they bloom again in summer. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, and just $29.99. Come check out all the heavenly new sights and scents that are making this spring the most beautiful ever. Lilacs like Grandma used to grow and better. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to Ken Lay, a.k.a. the Top 10 Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Family Garden Center. Listen daily as he answers the Top 10 Questions of the Week, streaming on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. You've tuned in to the Top 10 Garden Show with garden expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation daily as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Or visit face-to-face -face throughout the week where he can be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So this week's garden class is on peony, growing better peonies. I thought I'd just mention it because I'm teaching the class this weekend. Uh, I like peonies. I grow a lot of flowers. I'm actually, if I were to define myself as a gardener, I would define myself as a flower grower. I just love the fragrance, the beauty, the butterflies, the hummingbirds, just that sequence. I, I'm always trying to get them to bloom bigger, bloom again, bloom longer, bloom bright, brighter. So I'm playing with fertilizers and, and deadheading techniques and pruning and stuff. So it's just kind of a fun thing. And, and you never you never tire of it because the seasons, there's always a winter bloomer. There's always a spring bloomer. There's always a summer. Every, you can get something to bloom all 12 months out of the year. And so I like that. Whereas vegetables, that's mainly a summer thing. And then, you know, quite honestly, I get tired of picking tomatoes. Once you have a few bushels of them, it's like, oh man, it's October. Isn't frost ever going to come? And so you just kind of, I know it seems offensive to you vegetable growers, gardeners, but I've just kind of, I, I do do all the vegetable things. Uh, trees don't, I mean, it's, once they're big, they're done. It's not like an ongoing thing. Trees are once and done kind of stuff. Yeah, you might replace one every once in a while, but it's not, you know, fruit trees might be a little different. Orchards, my property's not big enough for orchard. Definition of an orchard is if you can have over seven trees or more, you are now an, an orchard. You, you have an orchard. If you're six trees and under, it's defined as a backyard garden. So there you go. I don't have room for an orchard in my yard. I don't want that many fruit trees. I love fruit trees, but I put them in pots. My peach is in a container by the hot tub. I mean, it's just right there. It's so easy. I stand up on the hot tub to pick the fruit or to, 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 to prune it. So I'm simplifying. But flowers, the flower grower. So peonies are a core. Peonies are some of your longest living perennials, the perennials and permanent kind of P starts, comes back every year. So per, perennial is, it's going to come back. You plant it once you get years of enjoyment. And so peonies are one of those. I think it's foundational. Peonies grow in full sun, 
to part shade, I say they need at least, I would say, four hours of sun to really perform well. Otherwise, the flowers will be smaller or you'll have less flowers. And they have that English, that, that great big, it's got a, a baseball size flower, usually doubles as many ruffled feather, ruffled or feathery type of a flower. Very deep, rich looking, and it's got a fragrance. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I love picking them and, the, and then floating them in this beautiful crystal bowl that we have that just kind of floats around and shows them off for all to enjoy at the dinner table or wherever. And so it's they're really good. The secret with peonies, and I've killed several, so it just kind of this is hard knocks. This is this is experience. This is how this is how you learn gardening is by killing things. I hate to say that out loud. But I, I found I'm I'm, in, I'm up in the Eagle Ridge, you know, Prescott Lakes area here above the high school in Prescott. There it's beautiful vistas. I get to see the dells. It's gorgeous. I get to see all the majesty that happens with the storms that come up those, those, those valleys. It's beautiful. But the soil is crazy hard. It's heavy clay soil. And so I killed the first few. We've been in this house for about 20 years. Now, when we killed the first few, it was I didn't amend the soil enough or I overwatered so that soil stayed too wet and peonies have this real fibrous root mass it's real thick that's what this makes them so not drought hardy but so robust even in the hotter summer months they still perform well because they got this big fleshy root kind of like a, a rhubarb got something like that real fleshy well that fleshy root all that carbohydrates all the all the starchy stuff in that in that root can start to rot and once that root starts to rot it is very difficult to get it to recover and so it causes rotting sitting in soil it's like putting your feet in mud for for an hour it feels pretty good my skin's so soft oh my wrinkles are gone but for a day and a half your skin's falling off same with peonies they don't like that they like wet and then they like to dry out. That's a secret. So really, I, I I actually created some raised beds. I've got my, I've got an Ito peony, which is the, it's, we grafted an English peony onto a tree peony root and you get this English peony on steroids. I mean, the flowers are as big as your hand and you get the funky colors, you get the yellows, and you get the bright colors and the fragrance is like, again, more intense. And so Ito peony, this is a big, this is a big peony. It's at least three, four feet tall in this beautiful ox blood red uh, container. It's glorious. It's just beautiful. When it's in bloom, everyone comments. And so you don't have to grow it in the ground. They can be in a raised bed or in a container. They're pretty flexible, but in the ground, make sure that ground drains or you'll have a garden experience to share on how to kill peonies. And here's how you get them to live. So peonies are pretty easy. And now's the time to put them in. Now they're, you'll get blooms. They're heavily budded and they're actively growing right now at the garden center. Okay, that's it for this segment. Got Lisa Waters Lane coming up with your with her segment right after this. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are lilac, poppy, purple plums, and our songbird columbine. This graceful beauty dances in the shade of the garden, holding its head high, smiling back at you. This bloomer comes back each spring with lacy green foliage, promptly followed by amazing two-tone flowers. An excellent cut flower that is both deer and rabbit resistant. So hardy, some varieties naturally call Arizona home. Songbird Columbine can only be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. The Top 10 Gardener, your source for timely garden advice, seasonally correct for the garden, guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. You've tuned in to the Top 10 Gardener with garden expert Ken Lane. Join him daily as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And we're back with Lisa Waters Lane, her segment, her section, her just garden inspiration, just another perspective of gardening. Lisa just puts her garden hat on, her garden gloves. I just love <laughs> gardeners, those bright hats and those bright gloves. It just screams gardeners. It does. So anyway, we're out there and and uh, gardening, and and she just has a good perspective, and decades and decades <laughs> and decades of experience. 
<laughs> Just kidding. You're still uh, young and vibrant in my world. Sure. 37 years. We've been married 37. We dated five years through college. It took me a long time to get through college. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> five years instead of the, so many kids now. I graduated in two years, got my doctorate. That was well, not me. It's not fair. I mean, back when we were in high school, you didn't take college yeah, classes. That's true. I mean, it's. We were free to be kids. And, and we have didn't fun. have the scholarship programs. The <laughs> yeah. families weren't as rich. I mean, I True. just, we had to pay our own way. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have 529 plans and grant. I mean, our grandparents, now our kids' grandparents helped pay for theirs because they came into money and they just helped. It was a huge blessing oh, to our kids. So they all graduated from college without debt and they had a car. And now go and launch and be free. That's all you need. And from don't us. come back. Yeah, don't come back. <laughs> I find that doesn't work as well. They don't listen so much. I call it when they first launch, it's called a soft, a soft launch. launch. You kind of they go and then they come back for a little bit and go kind of reset and they go again, they go out farther and then find that third launch. They are on their own. Mm -hmm. You don't see them as much. True. Very true. It's kind of fun. Megan's coming home this weekend. So yeah. that'll be kind of one of the kids are coming home to they visit. Know. Has been home in couple of years so yeah it's like oh what nice. are we gonna do i, no I brought a, i brought a bunch of plants home to plant <laughs> you know i got a rental i got a paint out the press team of Maryland, who have her put her <laughs> put her to work she will never come home again that's yeah. right they will keep her from getting back right there. gardening that's enough gardening. two minutes of yeah so speaking of plants to plant um so i brought in for the visual people who are yeah, watching candy uh, i brought in candy tuff so candy tuff is a great um the actually not showing that it was too white too like white the lighting's like it's so white yeah. the camera can't even focus on it it's like we need a white balance or something it's beautiful. a wonderful actually evergreen perennial yeah. uh excellent for those rock gardens those areas out there containers we've had it in containers we've had it it's in a native ground. it's a true native you'll see it floating <laughs> out there in the rock yeah. piles is you'll see this pretty white plant mm -hmm. that's it candy tough it's a spring bloomer but it is a very long yeah. spring bloomer yeah. so i would say almost what to like may yeah i mean you're going to summer it's yeah. in the entire spring season candy mm -hmm. tough will be in bloom and then it's got this beautiful green just mounding mm -hmm. kind of eight inches 12 inches tall it's beautiful right. every garden should have a candy tough perennial every year yeah. it comes back and does this without trying right right super easy to grow if you think you have black thumbs candy tough yeah. is a great plant for you sun 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 right not sun but like full sun like radiant sun so it's another one of those and probably people get tired of hearing us say this but we have it now yeah. Three weeks from now, we're not going to have it <laughs> because you get yeah. grows coming in. So it's available yeah. now. We've got it now. It's not one we carry year round, nope. uh, but now is the time to get it. And it is a we grow super a couple hundred plant. of them. And then when that's gone, that is it. That's right. all you get. And that seems like there's a lot, <clears throat> but we're going to have like 30,000 plus customers come through. That's really not very much. So, right. so all the gar all the gardeners will begin going, I want something in bloom. Right. And what can I have? And every cart will have I one. can't tell you. Every year, people come in and go, I want that white yeah. flower. And I'm like, oh, sorry. Should have been in two weeks ago. Yeah. But but but, I, but it wasn't Mother's Day. Well, this blooms <laughs> way earlier. This blooms in the when it's still frosty right. and, and uh, cold at night. That's yeah. why it blooms so long. Because mm -hmm. it's blooming. It doesn't get vaporized by the sun. By the heat. Definitely. Yeah. So, and yeah, another new tough. one that we got in. Now, I've not seen this before. And I'm going to take it home and try it because... Being a gardener, you got to try all the new stuff. Right? And you've got yeah. free labor coming. <laughs> so some people might be familiar with this. I truly was not. It's called a Turan Deep Red Saxifrage. What? Say it again real fast. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so they call it an alpine plant. So another one that's perfect yeah, for our area. Like um, it's going to be a spring bloomer. They call it a long. Yeah. So it's going to spring into early summer. So probably middle same May, time early as, May. Same, same time as, as candy top. Like they go together really mm -hmm. well. So it looks really pretty. I want to try it because I want to see how it does. But it also comes in, I think there's two different colors, maybe three. Um, so really pretty. Something fun to try if you haven't. If all you gardeners that are like, oh, I've seen it. I've done it. I've been there. Look how good uh, they look together. Those yeah. of you on the podcast, <clears throat> you are, you get it. So those of you just <laughs> driving down, going to Costco, uh, you should pull over, pull your phone out, and 
take a look at. No, it's, yeah. it's pretty. They're beautiful. Oh, yeah. It looks like a candy tuft, only in red. So it's got the same mounting pattern. You cannot see the foliage. It is covered in red flowers with a red stamen, red center uh, of the flower, mm -hmm. yellow center, but red flowers. Um, it's and this beautiful. one says it's an evergreen as well. Oh, so probably very similar try. to the candy this. Yeah. So yeah, definitely going to try it in my yard. Going to try it in a couple different spaces, see which one it likes best. But for those of you that like to try new things, come on down. Alpine plants. You, we are alpine. We are. Mm -hmm. We're just below the tree. We still have trees, so we're not truly alpine. But th those kind of plants love growing here. So it's mm -hmm. a great choice for. And both of them are about twenty bucks. I think. Uh, what is this? Dusty, uh, not Dusty Miller. <laughs> Candy Town, <laughs> Iris is uh, uh, twenty nineteen ninety nine. This one's twenty one bucks. So yeah, you get twenty dollars for for beautiful, stunning that flowers comes that back grow. year after year after year. Yeah, that That's blooms for like buy. two months or three months. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. So. Those were just show and tell. So what I wanted to talk about is some of the new spring flowering trees that we've gotten yeah. in that we haven't carried before. So there again, some of you people that want to try something different, we I probably don't want got what the it. Neighbors for you. God, I want something more fabulous, and I want it to glow <laughs> in the dark. There you go. So um, crab apples, crab apples do fabulous yeah, here. If you want a spring flowering tree that's just yeah. gorgeous and tough as nails. Crab apple is definitely the one, um, but we did get a couple of new ones. One is called Prairie Rose, so it's a double pink blossom. Nice, gorgeous. It's not going to have any fruit. It's it's sterile, so no fruit on there to worry about. It's going to get about eighteen by twenty tall and wide, so a nice canopy Ornamental little tree size. there for yeah. you. Yeah, um, and it puts on a um, yellow fall color. Oh, that's <clears throat> so yeah. it's nice. You're kind of getting some seasonality out of that. Yeah. And you're not having to worry about the fruit. Prairie Rose. Prairie, Prairie Rose. Rose. The other one is Sparkling Sprite. Um, this one's smaller, definitely. It's like a 12 by 12. Oh, nice. And I think it would Perfect do fabulous patio. in containers. Yeah. Great patio tree. Um, so it has a white blossom. The thing about it is it does produce a crab apple, but... It's, it's like an ornamental type thing. So it's going to be late summer. It'll put this fruit on. It'll be a yellow color. Ooh, it's going to cool. turn a dark orange in fall Sweet. and winter. So you'll have that little crab apple on there after the blossoms or the leaves fade. It'll give you some interest out there with that fruit kind of hanging on yeah, there. So the fruit size, winter. is that like it's marble small. size? Yeah, or yeah, mar small. like a marble? Mm -hmm. not, not, not a shooter, <laughs> not a keeper, but I, right. I don't know my marbles. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, whatever. But <laughs> great for just winter interests. You know, that's always something we're looking for. Uh, spring snow, which I think is its second year, but actually a really yeah. cool. It's a, about a 20 by 20 white blossoms. Uh, no, it's sterile as well, uh, but beautiful. My gosh, when it is in bloom, it is a show stopper. Crab apples, I think, have the brightest of all the flower colors of all the bloomers for, for mm -hmm. crab apples or red buds to robinias to they just have something about them is so intense right. including the white it's not just white it's intense pure yeah like purer than bridal white is gorgeous mm -hmm. very very pretty so flowering cherries which is yeah. another group that does fabulous here we have one called first blush this one's a new one it's a 25 by 12. So kind of tall and narrow. So yeah. another great for yards. Street tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dry uh, tree. Right. Has pink blossoms on it. Um, it has a narrow oval leaf. But the great thing about this tree is it gives you fall color. So you're going to get some orange and red in the fall. Oh, nice. So it's another one of those multi-season trees that yeah. I just think are fabulous. So and that you're one... out of time. So I oh, got to close, close it out. So I know you got to keep, keep going. <laughs> Now's the time to start seeing the trees are blooming here at the garden center. You can come and see and smell and touch yeah. and feel the trees of your choice. And then trees, they call to you. So they, they're actually personalities. They've got feelings to them. And they want to go home with you. Kind of like puppy dogs. If you're a gardener, you know what you know how to listen to their they're barking they're or they're meowing, uh, but they want to go home. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are lilac, poppy, columbine, and our purple twist plum. This Arizona plum is the ideal purple tree between evergreens. Blooms in a profusion of pink flowers that precede the deep purple foliage. Large enough to use as a front yard tree and behaved enough to use as a street tree. 
Plant pears flanking gateways, driveways, or an orchard-like rose to screen neighbors. Purple Twist Plum can only be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to garden expert Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Additional shows of this podcast, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook, Instagram, at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show with Ken Lane. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So we're into spring. Plants, you're seeing blooms all over. My daffodils are in bloom. Uh, Winter blooming jasmine's almost done. I mean, it's been in bloom for a month and a half. Uh, So your your Linton rose or, or what's the other name for that? Anyway, Linton, oh, hellebores. They've been in bloom for weeks and weeks. And it only gets, it kind of compounds like a snowball. It just gets more and more and more. And the trees accentuate the peak of spring. So when you see the trees in bloom, you know it is, there's no holding things back. It's going. And so you've had your purple leaf plums in bloom for at least two weeks, maybe more. It depends on your elevation. And it really depends on uh, your, your exposure, east, south, northwest, just your east side will bloom earlier. Your north side's going to bloom a little later by up to two weeks. That concerns folks in neighborhoods going, oh, my neighbors, they're peaches, right? they're cherry trees, they're, they're purple leaf plums, their red buds are in bloom. Mine aren't. What's going on? What'd I do? Well, might just be theirs are in a sunnier location. And so the sun, some of these are programmed to have so many sunlight, you know, so many hours of sun, boom, just go. Or temperature, soil temperature specifically. So the soil temperature on the east side of gardens are going to be warmer. North side, it's going to be chilly. That's why the snow sits around so long on the north side. Well, that affects the, the cycle. So you'll see some of that. And so we start here in the mountains really with the cherries. There's a, a native cherry tree, it's white, uh, that blooms. It just kind of sets sets the goal, sets the tone. It's now spring, fump, it goes. Purple leaf plums, this is a pink blooming flowering tree right now. It's It comes up next, almost right afterwards. So within, I would say, a week to 10 days after the, our native uh, cherry trees or, or flowering cherries bloom, um, they actually will start producing they don't actually produce fruit, but just pretty. I think it's got an orange color in the fall, whereas purple leaf plum blooms pink, and then the foliage is purple, and it stays purple right through fall. And then it's deciduous, so it's, it loses its leaves. Right now, I noticed this week the Bradford pears, or ornamental pears. Actually, there's a lot of varieties. So Bradford pear is the one that your grandparents grew. This is not doesn't produce fruit. It's an ornamental, so it's, it's for the flower, same pear flower, which are white clusters of them. And it puts on a kind of a silver dollar sized leaf, very glossy, uh, pretty glossy green leaf. The red color of fall is spectacular as well. It's the last tree to turn red in the fall of the year. So ornamental pears, they can be real big though. So they kind of get, you know, 30 by 30, almost too big for some yards. So we've introduced several varieties that are same height, but narrow. Actually, there's some that are actually jack pears. So jack uh, uh, flowering pears are, are 10 by 10. Actually, 10 by 8 is real small, like dwarfed. But we're trying to grow more of them that are don't, don't get as wide. So you get the same white flower, same pretty glossy leaf. But now, like capital pear gets 30 feet tall, but only 12 feet wide. Well, now all of a sudden, that's a you can put that next to the driveway. Man, it's not going to impede your truck coming or your RV getting down the driveway. And so we've got several like that. So Chanticleers, there's quite a few. But that just opened just this week. And so now is a good time to plant those and put them in the ground. Uh, crab apples will be next. So that'll probably be next week. So they usually bloom in April sometime. through April through May is when they bloom. And there's a lot of variety. And crab apples have the brightest colors, the purples. There's no tree that turns true purple like crabapple does, or red, bright, intense red, not not a muted pink. We're talking about red or white that's so intense, you can almost it almost glows in the dark. It's so white. Um, so and then after that, 
You've got, let's see, red buds will be in bloom probably by about the time red buds bloom. Crab apples are in bloom, that kind of. So we're into the peak of the spring season at that point. Red buds are native. So we've got this beautiful heart-shaped leaf. If you've never seen a red bud, welcome to the Southwest because this is where they grow wild. So there's a Western or, or Mexican red bud that grows at different elevations. So if you've ever been to uh, Lake Powell, and gone to the arch halfway up the lake. So when you, underneath the arch, literally right there underneath the arch or right at the base of the arch, there's a Western red buds and they're growing just in bloom in spring. It's spectacular, just wild by itself. I think uh, Lake Powell's at about 4,000 elevation, something like that. By the time you hike up to the arch, it's probably at 4,000. It grows wild at all these elevations. It loves growing here. Very drought hardy. They're native. I would say they naturalize very easily. Well, they're shrub form. Sometimes you don't want a shrub. You want an actual tree in the middle of the driveway in that island area that's not too big, but not too small, but really pretty. So now you've got tree formed lilac or, or red buds. So it's going to be eastern red buds are the one your grandparents grew. It's kind of, kind of a light pink, right? kind of like like a candy apple pink. It's that. Uh, same heart-shaped leaf. So it's as, almost as big as your hand, heart-shaped. And its fall color is, is gold. It's very pretty, very robust. You wouldn't think it'd be that hardy with such a big leaf, but it is because the root structure is massive. We're introducing more varieties for a brighter pink. We've we started growing. I'd say the number one seller right now still is Oklahoma red bud because it's got the same tree as your Eastern red bud, same exact tree. The, the leaf is the same, the fall color is the same, but the pink flower is intense. I mean, like it's really deep pink. So we bred it for the flowers. Now we're introducing that same flower with different foliage colors. And so for tree form, so you've got Merlot, same flower as the Oklahoma red bud, but now it's got red foliage. Same size leaf, still almost as big as your hand, heart shaped but the new growth is red. It's, it's spectacular. Uh, the fall color, I believe, is orange on that one. Then we've got flamethrower. The new, new growth comes out red, and the growth behind it is yellow, so it looks like a flamethrower. It's really cool. Equally as hardy, um, same bright flower, that, that Oklahoma red bud flower, but we're playing with or breeding the foliage is changing. So you got, so they, they do so well here. I think every yard should have a red bud. Now the question is, which variety is best for you? They're, they're not too big. So all of them, even a big, the, the biggest varieties, maybe uh, 18 feet with some maturity by 12 at most, maybe 10 feet, 12 feet, let's say mid-teens by about 10 feet wide. is pretty normal for a mature, like, like 10 years from now, mature, it's never going to get much bigger than that and easy to maintain, easy to water, easy to care for. You can't kill it. So red buds are next. And then after the red buds, I went on too long about red buds because I'm excited about them. It's one of those new trees you get to play with. That robinia or purple robe locust, it starts blooming usually about Mother's Day. It's when it's when it's in full bloom. So if you love to have moms over and celebrate the backyard and you just that first big garden party, you want something in bloom uh, about then, plant a purple robe locust. It's got big wisteria kind of blossoms that drop, drop down. I've grown them at all elevations. The most famous ones, I don't know why, probably because there's just so many of them out there, is Prescott Valley. You all grow purple robe locusts like I've never seen. They're going to get about 35, 40 feet tall by about eh, 15, 18 feet wide. So it's kind of, it's a true shade tree. But when it's in bloom, the, the wisteria blossoms just are just magnificent. People stop and go, what is that? I got to have one. Uh, but, 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 Purple robe locusts, locusts have smaller leaves and rows of them. So it makes them very efficient uh, for their, their water use. And when the leaves drop in the fall, they just blow away. <laughs> you know, not as much cleanup. They just, I don't know where the wind takes them, but it just takes them away. It's quite nice. I'd say most of these spring bloomers too, the beauty with a spring blooming type of, of tree is the flowers generally are smaller. So magnolias might be a little different. They've got bigger. So we do grow quite a few magnolias. Uh, there's, so there's several series that are hardy up here, but the flower is a little bigger. 
they're not generally messy because they don't put on so many flowers. Crepe myrtles, uh, smaller. Uh, lilac, smaller. Redbud, smaller. Uh, crab apple, smaller flowers. And they just wisp away. They just, there's just hardly any cleanup, even if you've got rock. Just pretty easy to care. Okay, that's it for this. I'm going to be right back. Got to take a break after this. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandmother would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Purple Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. They don't just bloom once in spring, they bloom again in summer. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, and just $29.99. Come check out all the heavenly new sights and scents that are making this spring the most beautiful ever. Lilacs like Grandma used to grow and better. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've tuned in to the Top 10 Gardener with garden expert, Ken Lane. Join him daily as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. I just love spring and being a garden center owner during the spring season. It's like the ultimate gardener's aphrodisiac. I mean, it just, it just gets so exciting. I mean, just every time deliveries come in and they only get better as the season progresses you just open up those doors and go wow if you just need some fresh air and you want to be inspired you don't have to buy anything just come and peruse bring your dog we've got someone that brings his parrots just to get some fresh air and see what the new things are out there just just how it just inspires you it just goes i live in a four season climate and i love it there's a reason I like the all four seasons of the year. And now we're into spring. The thing, the garden center is alive and, and growing. So the evergreens, they've got new growth coming out. So they're not just evergreen. They now got bright Kelly green. You can see the new growth. You can see they're alive. They're just, you're going, wow, that's inspiring. And then you've got like, like uh, things are in bloom. All the trees are in bloom. The, the, the perennial flowers of spring, they're in bloom. They're in cap. They're just right there. You're going, wow, the peonies are growing almost like three inches a day. I mean, they're they're waking up going, I'm, mm -hmm. uh, there's no holding me back. I want to bloom. Let's go. And so you just see things growing so much. It's inspirational. I mean, it just makes me feel better as a human being, but especially as a gardener. That's I, After 32 years, I still love going to work every day. I like talking to gardeners. So you know, here's something that, that you're hearing a lot of. And I, let me just disprove this myth. And a buddy of mine who's a, just retired, sold his business for a bazillion dollars, retired, having a good time, good friend. Um, he's going, oh, I just hear all these, these bad things about trying to find the right employees. They're just so hard. Everyone's whining, complaining. That's all you hear. I'm going, not here. I think good companies where people want to go to work every day they they provide the right environment. First of all, you got to pay well. Okay, that's it. So we're paying way above average. And we have the environment where people just love coming to see. We hire gardeners. And it's exciting to see those what's coming out. And gardeners shop here. And so gardeners are a delight to play with, to help, to guide, to give, give guidance. And so if the negative is you've always got, I call it the knucklehead factor. There's always that one customer a day that just off their, they're just off. And so they, they can spoil the entire day for the entire team. One person can destroy an entire team. So part of my goal is intervene. Don't let the a-hole take over the, I don't care how upset you are. You don't treat my people like that. So I go, I, def, I, I defend our team because all the gardeners after that are affected by that one neg. So I, we protect them, but we've had, we have to, we have too many applications. It was too easy. We've got great talent. I've never seen such talent wanting to work at a retail garden center than this year. It's We are not complaining. It is not difficult. But I think great companies do that. Poor companies that aren't good at that, they're the ones whining and complaining. Of course, that makes a news story. So anyway, I don't know why I went off on that. Sorry, I didn't mean to be a downer. But I think not everything in the news is real. I think that everything in the news is real, but it's not the whole story. Here's some of the other stories from a local gardener, local business, local business person that still loves going to work every day and playing with team team members that love doing the same thing. Okay, garden class. This weekend, gardening for peonies. 
Next week, the first week of April, first Saturday at 930, lilacs in a better fragrant garden. That's going to be, lilacs are going to be big. That'll be an important one. That'll be a popular one. And then the biggest one of the year, uh, herb, vegetable and herb gardens. That'll be uh, April 13th. It'll be standing room only. It's time to put the veggie gardens in. And we're trying to get that weekend after, that week after will be really full swing. But we'll gear up the garden center with more tomatoes, more, all the veggies will be here by then. So April 13th. Take a look at the entire class list at watersgardencenter.com. There's a big class button right there on the front page. Throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center. We love talking to fans of the show. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandmother would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Purple Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. They don't just bloom once in spring, they bloom again in summer. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, and just $29.99. Come check out all the heavenly new sights and scents that are making this spring the most beautiful ever. Lilacs like Grandma used to grow and better. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increased success in landscape that just feels better, then tune in daily to the Top 10 Garden Podcast. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in. You're listening to garden expert Ken Lane. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Thanks for tuning in to the Top 10 Garden Show. 